Today we're testing the Varox Eddy. Hello, I'm Griffiths. Welcome to Winnie Griffith. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living. Now we do reviews as well. Now today I'm testing and reviewing the Varox Eddy. Now I just want to say I'm not getting paid to do this review but I have been given this for free for a couple of weeks just to try out the unit, see what I think of it and then give you a review and a demonstration in this video. So no money has changed hands but I've had this for free just to try out but this will be returned to Andermatt. So I just want to say thank you very much to Andermatt UK for sending me out this unit. Hopefully I can do a good review. It's a brand new uh, tool for the beekeeping market here in the UK. It's come from uh, Switzerland. And the whole point of this machine is, is to kill varora mites by taking oxalic acid or apibioxal and to turn that solid into a gas, vaporize that in a hive. That gases then kills the varora mites. And this treatment here or this application device is very, very interesting. This is a, a battery, so there's no cable needed, there's no need to carry a generator and there's no need to carry any kind of blowtorch or anything. Everything's in this one unit, totally portable, you just charge up a battery and this is the first of this kind on the market that I'm aware of. It is in the UK at least and uh, I just want to open the box up, show what we've got in here and then take it out into the field, give it a good test run and then come back here and see what the verdict is. So, let's take a look. So, inside the box, everything in here comes with it. So, we've got some instructions, simple to follow, colour diagrams, the instruction manual, and then we've got the appliance itself. So, this is the battery. So, it comes with one battery, and one battery is enough to do roughly 15 hives. So, the majority of the industry, which is a hobby market, one battery is going to be enough to do all your hives. So we've got the main unit itself, a charger for the battery, and that's all this charger does is it slots into the battery like so, and just plug it in. Then there's a red light on the charger. Once that turns green, the battery is full. And then we've got these two cups, which you actually put the oxalic acid or apibioxal in. So I'll just assemble it quickly here, show you how it works basically. This slots directly into there. Click that on. Hold that on for three seconds, that comes on. Now if I were to press that button again, it starts heating up the cup there and if you put oxalic acid or apibioxal in there, it'll turn that solid into a gas. But we don't want to do that, so we're just going to turn it off and it's super, super simple to use. It's just a one button system. There's no instructions or go into menu and fiddle about with the settings. It's just pre-built, one button. So I'm just going to hold this in again and it's off. So a little bit about its features. So obviously the main feature is this is totally portable. All of this fits in this box. Keep that in the pickup. You can drive to anywhere and you're good to go for 15 hives. I mean, nothing on the market really offers that kind of ease of application other than if you were to go down a blowtorch option. Uh, plenty of those types on the market. The battery is a lithium ion battery, so this is pretty much the best battery that you can buy. If, you, if you're a big power tool fan like me, when you buy new power tools, whether it's Dewalt, Makita, etc., most their battery system works off the same technology, the lithium ion batteries, and those batteries last for years. So you don't have to worry about buying this, and after a year, the battery's gone totally dead, and you've got to constantly charge it. These batteries do last a fair old time, before they need changing. I mean, I think I've got my, if you're thinking of my cordless hand drill, um, I think I've got some six, seven years old, being used all the time, and that, that's a lithium-ion technology battery. 
I have got older ones, but I'm not sure if they are lithium ion batteries. But the technology there is very, very good. And say you've got more than 15 hives, you can buy another battery. Two batteries fit in this case, so you're good to go for 30 hives then. Or if you've got 15 hives per apiary, say, and there's a fair old drive in between, you actually can charge this up in the car. If you were to buy a small inverter charger that fits in the 12 volt system of your car, that knocks that up to 240 volt, so you can charge this in the pickup as you're driving around. I know I do that with some power tools in the pickup. I've got a charger there in the front seat. This will charge up easily on that because this all this will only need a small amount of electricity to charge this up. So as long as your inverter converts anything up to roughly 240 volt, it's going to be more than enough to charge this. Another great feature about this is it's got a built-in scale in the head here. So if we were to overfill this with oxalic acid the device would not fire up it wouldn't steam up so overdosing with this appliance is very difficult to do so that's a fantastic feature in itself and the heating ring the technology around this heating ring totally in innovative i think uh, these guys are the first company to have done this technology in a varora treatment uh, machine but the main selling point of this Varox Eddy, and it's by far what separates this device from all the others on the market is, this is the safest way to sublimate your bees. Connect this up, put the correct dose in there, place that in the hive, seal it up, press the button and just walk away. You can leave it 10 minutes with this in, it doesn't matter. If say, for example, you're really worried or um, a bit scared of sublimating or creating uh, a gas with oxalic acid, which it is a dangerous process. You've got to wear your correct PPE. This eliminates the risk from there. So we can put it in, plug it on, come back in 10 minutes, all the gases is gone, take it out, and you haven't been in contact with any of the gases by far the safest option to treat your bees if you want to go down the sublimation route. Nothing on the market comes close to the safety of this device. So that's the device. Now, a little bit about what I'm going to do today. I'm going to use Api Bioxal. This is the only oxalic acid treatment we're allowed to use in the UK. And if you were to dose your bees using this, this recommends roughly 2.1 grams per hive. And temperature wise, you can do this all year round, but there's uh, not much point. You want to be doing this kind of treatment for your bees when there's no brood. So we're in the start of January now, it's perfect temperatures. Anything between say 5 degrees and 9 degrees, that's the kind of temperature you're looking for. If it's too cold, in the minuses, the cluster of the hive, the bees are just going to be too tightly clustered for the gases to work its magic going through the whole colony, and it's not going to be as effective. Likewise, if they are rearing brood, the gases is not going to be penetrating into the comb, so you're not going to be killing the varora mites there. So it's just that little bit in between. You don't want it too cold, not too hot. Roughly, as long as it's not freezing, December, January weather, that's the kind of time that you want to be doing this. And before I go out, because I'm going to have the mask on, not sure if you're going to be able to understand me talking. I'm going to put 2.1 grams of Api Bioxal in this device. I'm going to be placing it into the hive. I'm going to put it on a hive with a solid floor, so I've only, I've only just got to block up the entrance. You don't want any gases seeping out. The more gases are seeping out of the hive, the less effective that treatment's gonna be. I'm gonna fire this on. I'm gonna leave it for 10 minutes, take it out, and that's job done. And then after treating the hive, I'll run this unit on the roof just to see how well this creates the vapor and uh, how well it goes through the api bioxal just for you to see if it's any good or if it's the kind of thing that you want to buy. Well, that's it. Nothing else to talk about. Get down with some bees, treat the hive, see how it works, and then come back to the studio to recap. 
Right, so we're out on site and we're gonna treat this hive with the Vorox Eddy. Now, before I treat this hive, I've got my PPE. So I've got a, a mask here suitable for oxalic acid uh, application. I've got suitable goggles and I've got acid resistance gloves. So the way I do this, I'm gonna put all the PPE on first, then I'm gonna start fiddling with the oxalic acid because you don't want cross contamination. So if I've been fiddling with the oxalic acid here, I haven't washed my hands, there's nowhere to wash my hands right out here. And then I'm gonna put the mask on, potentially I could be putting oxalic acid on my face. So I'm gonna put all the PPE on now. And once I finish treating with, with the oxalic acid, put everything back safe. I'm gonna take my gloves off. So the trick is pull the glove in on itself. So any oxalic acid on the glove stays inside the glove. And then with my bare hands, take the PPE off. That's the safest way to do it. So, nothing to do now but to treat this hive. And just a quick tip when you're putting your mask on, you want to make sure this is totally sealed. So there's two tests you can do. The breathe in test. So make sure the mask is on. Breathe in deep. And make sure you can't feel any air coming through the seal. So you want this as tight as you physically can. You don't want any of the gases coming in from the side. Breathing in heavy, you can't feel anything, and the same then, breathing out. Still, I can't feel any gases moving around the seam of the mask, so I know this is on properly. Right, job done, let's treat this hive. Now that's ready to go in the hive. So we've got the oxalic acid in the Varroa Eddy. We're going to place that inside just like so. We're going to put this on. And then that's indicating that it's on and doing its job. So we're just going to keep that shut for roughly 10 minutes and then we're going to remove that. Well, that seemed to have done the job. Now let's test this and see exactly how it works. So same again, we just put the other cap in there now. Right, that's on. Let's move everything away. and place this on. Well, that's it. That worked really well there. No problems whatsoever. It treated the hive nicely, didn't disturb the bees that much, and fired it up on the roof, and it looked very, very impressive. Now, what do I think of it? I really like it. The How to use it is super straightforward. You've got the LED system there with the one button. Super easy to use. The technology in it is great. First of its kind. Um, if I were to say that I, what I don't like about it, ideally it'll come with two batteries, but this is new technology, understandably it is expensive and with the two battery option it, pro it probably bumped the price up a fair bit because with these things I suppose it's the battery that costs the most, not the unit itself. It's like that with power tools, not sure if it's the same with this kind of technology but it probably is. Definitely for the hobby beekeeping industry where safety or you might not have been trained up in the use of sublimation, bee farmers obviously 
they might need a couple of batteries to last the day. And the only other downside that I can think of this, depending on your hive, if you've got a bottom entrance hive or a very narrow entrance hive where you haven't got, you can't take um, the entrance block out, this might not fit the devices where some of the other sublimation devices on the market, it's just got a tiny pipe that you've got to fit in. You have got to have a big entrance to fit this in. And I suppose it's much slower than what's on the market currently. This heats up from scratch every time and then it needs to uh, cool down before you can reuse it. But when you're talking about safety, I mean, few wives, maximum safety, then this is the tool for that job. So the big question, would I recommend you buying one of these? Well, it depends is the answer. If you're a large scale bee farmer and speed is a number one thing for you because you're paying for staff, etc., then probably it's at the minute not going to be suitable for you. But for the majority of the beekeeping market out there where you've got anything from one hives to say 20 or even 30, then I mean, seriously consider this, especially if safety is uh, one of your main concerns of sublimating. And I think sublimating and turning oxalic acid into a gas is going to be one of the main treatments moving forward. I'm hearing a lot of rumors that some of the treatments on the market is not as effective as it used to be. Some of the mites are getting immune to some treatments. Varora mites can't get immune to oxalic acid, so this may be, in the future, one of the only options we've got to kill Varora mites. And sublimation is new to me. I haven't done a great deal of it in the past, but moving looking forward, I think I'm going to be doing a lot more of it. And I'm just going to make a quick prediction here right now. I think this is a fantastic invention, a fantastic way to treat your hives. And I'm going to go out there and say this is, uh, this is obviously a first generation uh, using the lithium ion battery. I can only see this technology getting better with batteries being more powerful, with batteries holding more charge, where the two downsides of this is it's a little bit slow and the battery needs time to build the heat up and then cool down again. I think that's going to be uh, improved in years to come. I'm seeing that in the power tool industry where if you were to go back 10 years and tell me an electric cordless chainsaw would exist, I'd have laughed. I've seen them, I've used them, and if you've got enough electric power in a battery to power a chainsaw, imagine what that future battery technology is going to do in a similar device to this. So, got my eyes wide open to Andermatt. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same kind of content, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I try my best to upload new videos every week. Thanks for watching.